Ah, hi, my name is Mary Spender and you are watching Schuste Talks. And in this episode, I share with you what I Walk the Line by Johnny Cash taught me about guitar. When you think of country music, you probably think of Johnny Cash. I Walk the Line is one of the most famous country songs in the world. And I'm kind of confused as to why I've never actually sat down and learnt this piece of music before. So I am going to work my way through it and show you the process of that. And Orange very kindly lent me the Tremlord 30. You all know I am endorsed by Orange. I am completely biased. I love everything that they make. And sometimes it's really important as an individual original artist to think outside the box. So yes, you could pick up the standard, you know, guitar, the standard amp that you would associate with country music, but really it's already been done. So how can you challenge yourself to try and get that really cool classic country tone out of something that hasn't been used before? So let's take a closer look at the Tremor with 30. <laughs> Tremlord 30 is a British take on the 1950s amplifier. It's a 1 by 12 30 watt combo. This is a totally clean amplifier. There isn't a dirty channel that there is on my Rocker 15. Single volume control, simple EQ, just bass and treble. The clocks signify the two tremolo speeds which you can foot switch between. The shark fin control is the depth of tremolo, and it's all valve driven, including the post tremolo effects loop. This amplifier has a really unique speaker by a company called La Voce and it was chosen because it has more headroom, which is a good thing for a clean amp because obviously you can crank it up and it won't distort. And yes, of course, there is the bedroom headroom switch, which only comes in handy when you're in a home studio. It's been a while since I have played an amplifier that actually has reverb on board. This has a spring reverb tank and I have missed that clashy, springy sound that comes from having a tank built in the amplifier. Having reverb and tremolo in the amp just allows everything to be so simplified and obviously you can accrue pedals but when you're practicing and especially when you're at home overdrive and distortion are so enticing but actually the one thing that benefits your playing most is sitting down and playing even those heavy metal tunes that you want to learn clean and it's one of the things that just shows up your inconsistencies in technique i think it's one of the things that has saved me it's like it's a fundamental thing that i always do i often just sit and play clean guitar you'll hear the difference when you slap on all the other bigger effects uh, you usually use and yeah that's my little clean tone rant of the day so these are the settings i've used hopefully you can see the tiny white dots I've got it on the bedroom setting, so the volume is relatively low, and yet it's all there. Like the tone that I'm recording right now is just beautiful and crystal clear. I've cranked the bass a little bit because I sort of think I learnt from Zach of Mythos Pedals in Nashville when I was actually playing a Fender Esquire, which uh, Luther Perkins used, that there was a little bit of low end added. I might be completely wrong. But anyway, it's nice to have that, especially for this song. Um, treble, pretty level. And then I've got both tremolos going, not too crazy. Um, and the depth also isn't all that crazy, but it's definitely audible. And reverb, I'd have reverb 
all the way up if it was my own song, but not suitable for this style of music. So these are the settings. One of the things that has been missing from my guitar playing is really going back and focusing on an individual uh, that had such an iconic sound, just like Luther Perkins lent to all the Johnny Cash records that we know and love. Uh, I Walk the Line, obviously, Ring of Fire and Folsom Prison Blues. Like, there is a thing that keeps cropping up every time I read about him, and it's the boom chicka boom style. Um, some of you might realize what that refers to. It's this thing. <laughs> So Luther Perkins bought his Esquire secondhand from a shop in Memphis and supposedly the volume and tone controls were broken, they didn't work. So he had to adapt his style of playing to accommodate that. He had a very sparse, twangy guitar style and an incredibly percussive right hand, which is my favourite thing to do. I just love creating a rhythm with my right hand and it's not suitable for everything and I'm learning when and when not to do it and when to apply it and when not to apply it but really it just sort of creates this element of you being bigger than yourself. So to discover that Perkins, all his tone was basically down to the, the technique in his right hand. He would rest the heel of his hand on the lowest three notes and leaving the top three open and he'd pick out simple rhythm patterns and syncopation, although I don't think they're that simple, um, and it would drive the rhythm. And that is what's so famous about Johnny Cash's music, and that's the boom chicka boom style. There are fundamental techniques that I can learn that being a self-taught guitarist, I have possibly missed. So I am trying to educate myself in learning from the greats, like most of you probably do already. You study guitar players, or if you don't, then I thoroughly recommend it. It's really interesting researching how people came up with their own unique tones. And in this song, it is teaching me really, really simple things like how to connect chords with walk-ups and walk-downs. This one, four, five sequence that, you know, he's written the song in and how the key changes work. <laughs> That's definitely one thing I need to practice because it's the alternating, um, making sure that you're hitting a different bass string. It's so simple, yet I find it a challenge. And um, I think maybe I just need to sit and just go. Because I kind of, I'm tempted just to go. How iconic are the mm, the crescendos through that? It's just so distinctive and um, yeah, oh my god, I love this song. So the first verse is in the key of E and it alternates between the 5, the B7, down to the E, 1, the home of the key. Um, and then the four is really important. Ah, I'm getting that wrong. Wait. So 
So those walk-ups are incredibly important to get your hand in the right position to get the next chord. <laughs> I'm getting that wrong. Ah. So although E was the home key, it's now the five because we're in the key of A. So A, B, C, D, E. <laughs> uh. I have not really tried to play 1950s country. I've tried to, um, form my own kind of country music with some of my own original songs. I've got my own song called Southern Drawl. And then I've got my other song called Spire where it's... Just to realise how many country players that I have listened to since, obviously I have listened to Johnny Cash, but all the country artists afterwards and the legacy that he has left um, in that style of music, um, Luther Perkins too, his style of guitar playing, it's just still being created. Anyway, I digress. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Tuesday Talks. I hope you have learnt something, just that, like I've learnt something, many things in fact. Um, check out The Trem Lord, there will be a link in the description below. Orange are a huge supporter of mine, um, so go show them some love. They just keep on making good stuff. So thank you, subscribe to my channel, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you next week.